Hello, hello. Welcome to Basecamp Office Hours. We are so excited you're here. My name is Kimberly. I'm on the Basecamp customer success team. I'll be joined by a few of my colleagues, but I'm going to get us started. If you're here, let us know in the chat. There is a chat feature. Let us know where you're from. We know we have Basecamp users all over the world, but we're curious, those of you who are here with us today, exactly where you're from. So let us know that. And um, Basecamp Office Hours, we started doing this earlier this year, and we're so excited because it's a great opportunity for us to interact directly with you and answer any questions that you have about how to use the product. So that's what we'll be doing today. We'll not only show you how to use the product, we'll answer any questions about your specific use cases. And we also have a marketing expert with us who's going to share some of his own projects in Basecamp and show you the layout of how we use them here at 37 Signals. So you guys are in for a treat. Thank you for spending your time with us today. We'll spend about 45 minutes today going through the product and answering questions. And if you have any questions that we don't get to, we can always get to them by email. So we'll give you that information of how you can reach us after this session. Couple of housekeeping notes. Today's session will be recorded. So we'll send that link out. It's actually the same link that you joined the webinar today. Once our session is over a few minutes later, the recording will be uploaded. So it's a place you can go back to if there's anything that we've shared or showed you that you wanna go back to, or you wanna share it with any colleagues. So that is there for you guys. Um, also, you'll see not only the chat, thank you for letting us know where you guys are from. Hello, Prescott, Arizona, Buffalo, New York, Ohio. We're excited that you guys are here. We love to be interacted with throughout the session. So definitely use that chat. If we're explaining something and you want to give us a thumbs up or a, I don't understand, let us know in the chat because we'll be eyeing it just as much as we can throughout the session today. And then we're not just talking into an abyss. So thank you for that. Um, you'll also see on the right hand side of your screen a question mark. That is where you can submit any questions that you have. I've preloaded some of the ones that we got as people registered for the session. But if you have an additional question, pop it in there. You can also upvote someone else's question. So if you see a question that you're like, oh yeah, I wanna know the answer to that too, definitely upvote it. So we'll make sure that we get to it in the session. Uh, again, I said, my name is Kimberly. I've been at 37 Signals a little over seven months, but was a Basecamp user for about a dozen years before that as I ran my own business and worked with clients in Basecamp. So as I'm chiming in on how to use the product, most, most of that will come from my previous use case and my previous experience, but I've also learned a ton more about the product since being here. So I'll be sharing that along the way as well. I want to introduce a few of my colleagues. And first, I'm going to start with my friend, Ashley. Ashley will bring you up. I call Ashley the queen of demos, but <laughs> welcome to the webinar. Thank you. I'm really excited that we're all here. I'm really excited for anyone who's watching the recording too. I'm glad you signed up. Um, we do a whole lot at Basecamp on our success team. We're on the newer side, but uh, we've grown a lot over the last year. And you, if you um, get everything that you need from this marketing uh, office hours and you decide, you know what, I would really like to speak to Ashley, I would really like to speak to one of our, her colleagues named Rodrigo, then let us know at guides at Basecamp.com and we'll be able to set up a one-on-one -on -one call with you over Zoom and make sure that you feel completely set up with uh with base camp with anything any questions that you might have we're a wealth of information we'd love to share perfect ashley i'm going to keep you on the screen and go back to something i didn't mention we also have some video tutorials as well um we'll pop that in the chat but if you go to basecamp.com learn you'll see some videos walking through specifically how to use some of our features step by step so that's one of the roles that i have here at basecamp is to create some of those video tutorials so basecamp.com learn is where you can find those i also host our basecamp podcast rework podcast with our founders jason freed and david heinemeyer hansen so if you're looking for business philosophies their um, ideas about how to run a company and a better way to work you can check that out and we'll also put a link to where you can find that in the chat Behind the scenes, we have someone else on our team. The head of customer success is Laura. She is in the chat, you will see her. Um, if you have onboarded with us recently, if you've started a new Basecamp account, you have heard from her, you have gotten an email from her and she likely sent you an email yesterday reminding you about today's session. So Laura will be in the chat actively as Ashley and I are on here live. So she'll answer some of those questions and also send some links. And she says hi from behind the scenes. So at this point, I wanna introduce our special guest. So um, Ashley, Lauren and I did some 
office hour sessions earlier this year, as I said, and they were very general for anyone interested in Basecamp. But we thought we would tailor this specific session to people interested in marketing and setting up their Basecamp projects and Basecamp accounts for marketing. So we thought it made sense to bring in an expert. And so we are joined today by our head of mar marketing, Glenn Parahito. Prior to joining 37 Signals, Glenn led marketing and brand teams at Casper and City and held creative director roles with several agencies working on brands like Procter & Procter & Gamble, Target, Samsung, and AT&T, just to name a few. As the head of marketing, Glenn hit the ground running and his team produced Basecamp's first commercial in the company's history. Let's take a look. Come with me if you want to work. Who are you? I'm you from 2023. I'm still working in 20. Not the point. With this device, people can send you endless messages instantly. So I can work from anywhere? You're going to work from everywhere. Anyone can schedule you for meetings and your schedule. I'm good. You're... But the gifts and the emojis and the two hour video calls. Am I still with Darren? Ew, we dumped him in the 90s. I can move you here. Let's see. It'll be worth the wait. Here we go. There he is. Hi, everyone. Glenn, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Um, before we, I know you're going to share your screen and show us some Basecamp projects. Before we do that, kind of tell us your background with Basecamp. I know you're relatively new to the company, but have used the product before. I have. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah. Uh... I, as you mentioned, I'm the head of marketing here at 37 Signals. I've been here for just over four months now. Uh, the TV commercial you just saw is still on the air. I don't know if anyone who's, uh, who, who's joined us today has, has actually seen it on TV, but we filmed it uh, just about two months ago um, when I was two months in. So uh, really hit the ground running when I joined. Um, we formed a newly formed marketing team, uh, which over you know uh, nearly 20 years of business we haven't had before. Um, so we're a scrappy five-person marketing team, and we use Basecamp. And as Kimberly mentioned, I, I've used Basecamp uh, before in my past roles. So before joining here, I was at Casper, uh, which is the bed and box company, um, where we did not use Basecamp. I wish we did, but I, I inherited a team and all the processes and tools there. We had a marketing team of 50 and um, seven uh, external agencies, but we used a tool there that I was not a fan of called Coda. And then I had a five person project management team that would facilitate all the work. Um, but, you know, over the years, been a part of many other teams like City right before that was a thousand person global marketing team. And we did things very slowly, very uh, old school and didn't use any tools like Basecamp or Asana, et cetera. Um, and then before that, I uh, worked on Madison Avenue for many years, worked with hundreds of clients on the agency side. And uh, just about 11 years ago, I, uh, I read Rework, like a lot of us did, and, uh, and learned about this new product called Basecamp. Basecamp 2 had just launched, and uh, at the agency I was at at the time, uh, tried out Basecamp, and, uh, and we loved it. Uh, we kind of tested it out with a team within the agency. So we used it on one account. We used it on uh, on, a, on our Google account at the time. And um, seven of us used this thing called Basecamp. And it, what, what, what we realized worked really well with it was that we didn't have to take any courses on it. We didn't have to do any kind of lengthy trainings or watch demos. It just worked. None of us were, uh, other than one producer, none of us were project managers by trade. None of us were like super technical people. And, uh, you know, it, it just helped move the work along in terms of tracking the progress of a six month project, of being able to communicate outside of, you know, 11 years ago now, uh, of, that was pre-Slack. So it was just email, text messages. We were, of course, working uh, long hours in the office back then. So it, it, it was nice and refreshing to have this tool that kind of centralizes 
the right tools around the project rather than multiple tools around your many projects of like, what is that on again? Is it on this file sharing thing or is it on this messaging app that we have or is it in our inboxes? Instead of, you know, trying to like hunt for where the note is or where the file is, it's, it's all in this kind of mini ecosystem, which, which I love. Amazing. Um, sorry, Kimberly. No, that's great. Actually, Glenn, I know you're going to share your screen with us. We thought it would be helpful for you to see some of the projects from a high level of how Glenn has organized his marketing team's function. So while he does that, I'm going to pop a poll up on the screen because we are curious, what level of base camper are you? Have you never seen the product before? And this will all be brand new all the way to expert level. You just came to hang out with the three of us. So let us know where you fall on that. You'll see that poll. You can just pop in, what level of base camper are you? And Kimberly, since we're sort of improv on this one, should I wait to share my screen or uh, for the polling or? Let's do it. Go ahead and share your screen and you guys can answer that poll as, as we go along. All righty. So uh, first time for us doing this together. Uh, thanks again for having me as a special guest. Uh, I, I've sort of made sure that you know, I wasn't sharing anything, you know, confidential, but this is my actual base camp screen. This is how I've organized my own work. Uh, what you'll see is is, is that uh, surprise. I'm a. I, I believe I'm a just typical Basecamp user. I'm not like a power user. I'm not like hacking it. There's no like secret tricks I have. It. it, it I, I believe I, I use it. Uh, you know, very similarly similarly to many of you. And uh, you know, for those of you who are current users or uh, are maybe considering Basecamp. Uh, I, I think it's it's good context to know that not only have I worked on the, the brand side of, of many sizes and on the agency side, but I also own my own business for, for many years uh, of my own agency. So having to, you know, bring in clients on a Basecamp project, having to facilitate invoices and, um, uh, you know, all, all the other things outside of, you know, day-to-day -day marketing needs, uh, Basecamp's uh, really great for us. So, um, just an overview of, of how I organize my projects. I, I pin all the kind of day-to-day -day ones up here at the top. Uh, at the top left is our company-wide uh, project. So 37 Signals, we're a company of about 80 people um, in, keep me honest, Kimberly, 16 countries around the world. I think that's a good guess. Yeah, yeah. So we're a fully remote company. Uh, we don't have a physical office anymore. And uh, we work really well together. Uh, most of my own team, team of five, I haven't even met in person yet. Um, Tad and I, uh, who, who worked on the commercial together, we've met uh, a couple times uh, during live production, but our, our upcoming uh, company-wide uh, global meetup is coming up soon, and I'm really excited to, to meet everyone else in person. Then is I, the project called Glenn is my own top secret project where I just <laughs> put like my own sort of half baked ideas, random notes to myself, maybe uh, some other kind of reference from past projects over the years that that might be useful. And then uh, at the, uh, also at the top here, Glenn and Elaine. Elaine's my direct manager, uh, so she's our uh, chief operating officer, and she and I have a lot of planning uh, in there because. The, the, the head of marketing sort of CMO role is brand new here. So she and I work together on like, you know, how does marketing impact the business in the right ways? Uh, and then finally, uh, on the, at the top marketing strategies, our leadership team. So Jason and David are co-founders. Uh, you know, once things are vetted with Elaine and I, we kind of move things over to leadership on like, here's how we're kind of uh, moving forward on implement, implementing uh, the kind of business strategy in, into marketing strategy and how that rolls out into the world, in, into the work that, uh, you know, the rest of the world sees. So everything else there, I, I think last one to note is marketing team internal, which is what I wanted to share, but I, there's a lot of sensitive information in there. There's a lot of like planning and things we're still working through. So I won't be opening that one up today, but it's one of the, the those five, uh, uh, avatars you see there, that's that's my team, the marketing team. Um, and, and that's where we kind of, we, we, we have a pretty scrappy, pretty unconventional marketing team. Um, we don't have, you know, a creative director. I, I double as our creative director because that's what I've spent the majority of my career doing. I, I see a very large overlap with leading the marketing work and leading the creative work. Um, we don't have a dedicated copywriter. Collectively, we all write copy depending on the channel. 
So uh, Chad is our kind of head of uh, video production. Um, Kelly is our head of SEO content, so editorial kind of long form content. Rolando is our head of paid media, so everything in kind of advertising channels he, he uh, plans and, and buys and places. Uh, alongside uh, a big part of Rolando's world is, is paid search. Um, and we, ha we actually have a separate Basecamp account with our paid search agency. It's one of our very few agencies externally. Everything else we do for the most part is handled in-house. And then finally, Sean, who's our, our designer. Um, but he's like kind of jack of all trades designer. He's, he's brilliant at like product design, but also uh, traditional kind of graphic design uh, uh, and uh, you know, above the board sort of art direction. So uh, small and mighty team, but uh, you know it's a great project for us to have as on, an ongoing project, just to kind of figure out where our collective skill sets sort of best complement each other, so that they can kind of go off in their kind of one person departments, if you will, to 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 bring the to bring the work into the world. Then everything else is sort of uh, you, you know broken out by different kind of marketing disciplines. Uh, this is. Not an exhaustive list, but th these are the ones that I, I'm typically in most of the day. There's a, a few more here that are kind of ones that I jump into every once in a while. But you know, as many of you know, in the in the hey menu, if if there's something that needs my attention in any of these other projects, I'll uh, easily be notified in real time. And uh, some of you might know that we're sort of famous for not having a lot of meetings because we all use Basecamp. Uh, uh, really effectively. So this is what my next month looks like. It's you know four or five meetings in the, in the near future. So you know that that's the the kind of home screen, if you will. I don't know, Kimberly, if you had any follow ups before I jump. Yeah, in. I was just going to jump in, and if you scroll down, there's an all parents Basecamp project, and it's interesting because I think all, all right. of us here internally use Basecamp for our business and things, but we also have some social channels. You're part of an all parents. I'm part of an all pets. There are some kind of fun projects that we separate out that kind of part of our lives into separate base camp projects. That's funny you mentioned that. I saw a question from one of our attendees that was around like, is there an easy way to view all files in your base camp, which there is if you go into find and into, you know, uh, if you go into search everything by anyone everywhere sort of uh, in the files, but a lot of the files that you'd see in our, uh, across all of our projects are like parent <laughs> and like recipes that someone recently cooked or funny memes. Yeah. Because, you know, since we're a global company, we use a lot of these projects to, to really connect with each other. And some people I feel I, I, I know pretty well, even though I haven't yet yeah. uh, met them personally, but you know, some people have been here for, since the beginning and, and yeah. uh, it's, it's been, it's great. Well, this is a really good overview of what your homepage looks like. And I think the biggest takeaway here is that you have multiple projects divided up with some with just you, like a solo project. I know I have a solo project of my own and then all the way on the other side of the spectrum, one project that is the entire company. So it's really divided out just depending on who you want to interact with within that section of work, if you will. Absolutely. Yeah, so you know, you you kick things off with uh, showing one of our many versions of our TV commercial. So I, I think it makes sense for us to jump into uh, that, that that spot, which we call the future. Perfect. Um, and I, I think it's a good one to share one because the work is out in the world. It's it's not confidential information. Uh, and and two, it, it's a completed project. It's a time based project, and it's a great way to see kind of end to end what that project looked like. Um, in this case, we invited the client in quotes, and in the in this context, the client is our external vendor partner. So we didn't have an external agency, we didn't have an external production company. What we did was we built an external production team because we don't always need a hair and makeup artist uh, as staff for Thirty Seven Signals. We don't always need a camera operator or a grip or a production assistant. So uh, we, we sort of built our team piece by piece. Uh, with our own uh, kind of networks that we have and added them on and and kind of gave them the visibility of the right aspects of the project. So you can see in docs and files, you know, they get all the creative work, the location scouting, um, the behind the scenes stuff, but not the budgeting, not the vendors, not the logistics. Um, 
Chad and I led casting for uh, talent, and you know, we, we we would not want we wouldn't need our outside team to like weigh in on which actor makes the most sense. So, a, a lot of those things we 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 keep internally. And then I think uh, you know the message board is a good kind of summation of how the project went. So we had other than reaching out to certain contexts to get them onto the project, we only had maybe four or five intro emails uh, and a total of two meetings during this whole project. So we had a, a pre-production, we had an intro meeting to kick off the project uh, to, to you know, give them more information around uh, what we're trying to do here. And then a pre-production meeting the day before the shoot. So we, uh, in my past, doing TV commercials take many, many months. They take lots of feedback, lots of revisions, dozens and dozens of uh, emails and meetings. Uh, but with four or five emails and two total meetings for this project, I think it's an exceptional example of how to, how to do some, uh, some work in the marketing world using Basecamp. Um, I won't open up every single one of these, but, you know, the... A, a good one is our kind of kickoff message uh, in Basecamp. So once we assembled our team, Chad put together this quick kind of cheat sheet on like a lot of these people haven't used Basecamp before. Here's quick links on like what all the things are. You know, for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you could you could click these links to to easily kind of get smart on like how to use this uh, this app called Basecamp and uh, and how we can just get on with like doing this kind of quick turnaround work that we're, we're up against. Uh, the next one here is kind of our storyboard. So before we engaged our team, uh, this was what, this is an example of uh, work I put together to go over with Elaine and then with the, the leadership team to get approvals and then work up a, project, a projection of uh, the budget on, on what this would cost to produce. And uh, you know, once we were feeling good about what we're trying to make, then you know, building the team accordingly. So it started with this one page. It started with like a a, a quick director's treatment, and uh, and then once the leadership team was like, yeah, out out of three options, this was the one that that got chosen. And then I kind of uh, from there went to like, here's what that set would look like to build out. We would need to rent certain things. We would need to buy certain things. We would need to build certain things and then you know a little bit of a look and feel on like that 80s character because we're kind of doing this like time travel type of sketch piece and then finally uh the storyboard so you know the 30 second spot that you all just saw is really kind of frame by frame uh what we drew up in in the storyboard so uh 12 frame board for a 30 second spot and then we did an alternate scene here because some of the media channels that we had most people view ads on mute. So we did one that did not require dialogue, did not require a, a script. So it was kind of our, our uh, alternate version, which uh, I think came out, came out pretty good, pretty, came out pretty well. So, you, you know, we did this 30 second spot, but it, it, during that shoot day, we also did a 60 second spot, which I actually prefer if, if, if any of you haven't seen it, the 60 second version's uh, pretty funny. And then there's, you know, versions that are, vertical for TikTok, there's um, six second bumpers for YouTube. You know, there's, uh, as many of you know, there's so many channels these days that you, you know, the old in the old days we made one asset, right? And, and you put that out into the world and and hope it works. But now we're creating like 40 versions of the same thing. And, and, and uh, you know, tools like Basecamp help you expo make exponentially more work to to disseminate out into these these many uh owned and paid channels so glenn i'm gonna have you go back to your project and i think we can answer one of these questions that we have in the chat which is how do we compare using to-do list versus card table i noticed you have both in your project both to do's yeah. and a card table so maybe we can knock that out of why Absolutely. you guys are using both or one over another for different cases absolutely it's a great question so as you can see all the to, to do's are completed because the project is completed but uh just for an example these are what we these are the to do's that we had for pre-production um you can see they're they're assigned mostly to chad but uh some to me some to our uh to our vendors but uh some of these things are these kind of one-offs that require they're sort of like one step like book a pa you know book 
a location, they don't require like a week or multi-week process where uh, I think when it's like a one-off task, to-dos uh, work really well for. And, you know, you could, you could open one up and uh, let's see if this one, this one doesn't have any context behind it, but, um, you know, some of them will just have notes and, and uh, uh, a little bit of back and forth on the to-do. But for ones that take more time and more consideration, more uh, people on the team to to sort of weigh in on, um, the card table makes more sense. So in this case, post-production was uh, where we did all those uh, many, many assets that we mentioned. Um, if, if any of you have seen, I'm going to send a link after this, uh, but Chad made a making of video that uh, can sum this project up a lot better than I can. And he, he did a little bit of shuffling around on, on things here to, to sort of reenact for the making of video. So it's, it's not 100%, uh, uh, doesn't have 100% uh, all the information that it once had. But for that one kind of main 30 second cut, for instance, it was one card on the card table. And it's, it's not reflected in here, but we had a probably 10 day conversation in these comments of like, different editing notes like you know could we try this music instead um can you cut out that part in at seven seconds and and put that one take in there instead or let's swap out that line uh that she 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 reads in at, at that one time so the the making of videos the making of video will have that captured in it but um it, it'll show kind of in written form like what the post-production conversation looks like within that one card. So, you know, that's something that would not make sense as a singular kind of to do, because, you know, once you go into, and you, you could kind of configure the cards as you like, but for us, it's, you know, putting things in triage, I would typically do in, in terms of like, these are the needs for the channels. Like, uh, you know, in, in someone like Chad's head, who Chad for context, again, he was not only uh, one of the kind of, uh, extras in the squad he was the director on set and he was also our editor so just like incredible kind of multi-skilled talent but to, to him he's seeing the 30 in his head he's not seeing the 15 he's not seeing the 60 he's not seeing all these other versions needed so as the mar head of marketing i would go in and like here's all the stuff we need put them in triage and then in, in terms of priorities in terms of what's going live when in terms of uh, you know, how to version out things most uh, efficiently, um, Chad will then put them into on deck and then into editing and graphics in this case would be would be motion graphics, the end card, uh, in, in some cases, uh, the kind of um, call to action buttons as needed, and then into review for not only my review, but then up to as needed up to leadership even, and then finally into the done pile. Um, Glenn, I'm going to jump in on card table, um, answering Mike's question, how best to use card table and marketing projects. And I have a video on that learn channel and we'll put it in a chat all about card table and how to use it. But to Glenn's point to do's versus card table, I think we've seen people using to do's as Glenn mentioned for one and done kind of ideas. Like it's done or it's not <laughs> checked off the list. Whereas card table works really well for things that have a progression and you want to see where, what stage of a process a card is. So that's kind of how we internally have separated those two. Um, mm -hmm. But that card table video talks more about that a little bit on the, the differences between the two. With everything in Basecamp, I will say, and Ashley and Glenn, you guys jump in, so much of it is personal. Like it is so flexible that you can set it up how it makes sense for how you work and also how you think. Mm -hmm. So again, we use to do's as one and done, card tables as progression, but there's so many uses for it in that card table video. I have walked through several examples of how we internally use it for all kinds of different industries. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good point. I think I'll just build onto that with uh, the, you know, with my team, they, they don't have any uh, people that they manage, but I have a, a team of five. Instead of me kind of verbally checking in on them every day, like, what are you up to? What are you working on? Our tools like card table or seeing what to do's are, are checked off is a great way for those of you who manage people. To, to see progress on things of like these kind of, you don't need weekly status meetings. You, you don't need to kind of like nudge people like, hey, how's that thing going? You don't even need to be physically in the office uh, in, in, and look over people's shoulder to see uh, how things are, are going. 
when everyone uses Basecamp in uh, in a similar way, you, you start to just kind of peripherally see the progress happening, uh, if, if, if that makes sense. I'm going to jump in and Ashley, I'm going to switch cameras here and have Ashley share her schedule or her screen. Um, we've got a couple of upvotes for a question from Mike, which is how to deal with subtasks and cross department tasks. We can't seem to get organized. Mike, thank you for the context. Um, subtasks nested within tasks. And we do have that. There's a way to group tasks. And um, Ashley will share her screen and show show you that. Um, the second part of that question while Ashley shares her screen is cross department tasks. And I think we've seen from Glenn's projects, there's a lot of things that are cross department. I mean, I'm a part of a se several marketing projects, Glenn, of yours that I'm not on the marketing team, but things that I just need to be looped into. And um, that's how we do things internally here is cross department is just create a project for all the people who need to be involved. Yeah, um, Glenn, if you could um, get rid of that screen, then I'll be able to share mine. Oh, let's see. Ashley, are you able to share it now? Mm hmm. Yep. Perfect. OK, so here, well, I'll let the, I'll let the screen show. Can we all see it? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. So here I'm in. Let me zoom out just a little bit. We're in a Basecamp account. I'm clicking into a Basecamp project. And similar to what Glenn showed us, I have a client here as well. I'm going into the tool. And then as I get into here, of course, there's this fun figure of a hill chart. But what we're going to look at from momentarily is um, a to-do list. And here I have several things that I've decided belong into a subcategory. So um, I'm calling that contract details, and here I'm calling it Basecamp Action. So every time we have a new logo request, for example, um, with my fake marketing team, then I will go ahead and create a new list. And when I do this, there's actually an option to, um, right? I love when it's working. There's actually an option to use a to-do list template and allow the client to see this. So no matter what kind of context you're working in, let's say it's private for now, I can in advance or, or you know, maybe in the moment, create a template and say, um, or use it to do this template and say, I'm going to use this new logo request. This is what has happened in the past. It's happened many times before. So Basecamp then spins it up and says, all right, here is your new request. Um, and so this is where I'll probably maybe edit the, edit the beginning part of it and say, or Kimberly, save those changes. And here's where I can kind of make even more sub lists if I wanted to. So you can click on these like three little lines to the left of a task, hold down command, and then select another one in the same way, group them together. And now we have another group here, adding colors, adding emojis, whatever you feel is best. You can also click into a list itself and then um, add a group this way too. So those groups are really just what we're calling sub lists. So that's probably going to be your best way to to handle that. I will tell you, I mentioned earlier that I used Basecamp for like 10, 12 years before working here. And this is a feature I didn't even know existed. So I was on a demo with Ashley like my first week and was like, what? I did not know about this subtask. And it really is a game changer. Yes. And I think really all of these bulk select options are fantastic. Yes, we know how to group them now. But if maybe I put this in the wrong location, wrong project, no problem. Just hit move to or copy to some other location, some other list, some other project. Or if you want to bulk assign all of these to one individual person, you can go ahead and do that. Or if I want to bulk edit all these different dates, Maybe I can select do on. Maybe they're all moving to one specific date. Um, or, you know, maybe I should want to shift the dates forward. This can be super helpful when your deadlines are moving. And it's wonderful for marketing teams specifically. And this is a brand new update that just it's happened. Brand new. <laughs> so happy about it. Really I'm cool. pretty excited about it. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to a marketing specific question, Glenn. You and Ashley jump in on this. What's a good way to organize Basecamp for use as a content calendar? You know what? Tracking ideas, concept posts, documenting results. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up because Glenn is um, a manager of Kelly 
um, as he mentioned, is uh, very much in charge of long-form content and SEO. So I pulled up one of his articles when you were speaking. Um, and this one is called, Why Your Projects Need a Kanban Board. And so the Kanban board is the card table. So for us, um, I thought this was just a wonderful visual. And Glenn, please add anything here um, where we're talking about if it's blog posts, social media updates, or YouTube videos. We are tracking articles here, for example, all the different kinds of ideas in the triage section, and then moving it into similar stages like we saw previously. On deck, we're writing the draft, or um, things that have been sent for edits, and maybe we have a revision stage as well. So I think Kelly did a wonderful job in kind of mocking up what a content calendar could look like, and we can make sure to send this, include this in the chat as well. Yeah, that's a great, That's uh, thanks for that. Yeah, the, the our content calendar is in kind of uh, in evolution mode right now. Kelly's done a great job. Uh, he, he he started a few months before me and, and created this content calendar uh, more along the lines of our blog or our article, uh, our articles, if, you, if you've read any of them. So he's in, in his, uh, you know, nine months here, he's written, what, 70 something articles <laughs> a lot. Of, of content. And now what we're trying to do is syndicate that content because it's kind of, a lot of it is not, uh, it's not like it's it's rooted in like a certain point in time. It's kind of always re relevant content. So how do we kind of pull that content up the funnel, if you will, uh, from a marketing standpoint in, into our social media channels? And how do we focus on some of uh, this content in in short form, uh, you know, via via emails or or um, or, or video content? So what we're trying to do now with our content calendar is integrate it across all of our owned and paid channels um, and, and treating our content calendar more like an editorial calendar of, you know, if we're talking about how to start an agency or how, uh, you know, software teams use Basecamp, what are the right ways to, to bring aspects of that content into kind of relevant uh, versions of that content in relevant channels to, to relevant people, <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's something we're undergoing right now. I, I, I would uh, love to show progress on that, but it's um, really new for us because our team is newly combined to, to really kind of uh, connect the dots, if you will, for, for all things marketing. And but, I um, use, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry Glenn. Oh, I yeah, just, well, uh, you go, you. Uh, a little bit of a lag there. Uh, last last thought there for, for those of you that lead marketing firms or ad agencies, uh, you might be separating your projects out by client or by account. So if you have, uh, you know, a, the Nike account, uh, maybe your content calendar is is broken out just for that account within that project, um, and, and then you do so similarly with that template for for each of your accounts, rather than having it, your own, like how how we do it right now having co the content uh, being its own project, if that makes sense. And Ashley, while you're sharing your screen, I was just going to point out, Kelly uses Card Table for content creation. I use Card Table for content creation for the podcast, so we can track all those episodes. Card Table is not a tool that automatically shows up when you start a new project. So Ashley, will you show us really quick when you start a new project, how to add the Card Table tool? Absolutely. So let's just go ahead and make a new project. And while we're here, you start off with five tools that we think are pretty essential to whatever it is that you're trying to do. But we don't want to limit you at all. And so you have the option on every, uh, every project page to change the tools. And so here, now we have a slightly different view, but still pretty similar. So we can do a couple of things here. If I need an additional message board for maybe everything related to client communication, um, maybe this one is going to be internal, you know, communication. This can be whatever titles make sense for you and your team, of course. So we can add multiples of what already exists. Maybe we can remove something that we're not using to kind of clean things up visually. But we can also scroll down and pull in some really fantastic tools. Automatic check-ins being one of my personal favorites, especially when it's uh, time boxed work, when you need to kind of have regular check-ins with your team. That one's wonderful. But of course, here is card table. And once it's up there, you can click on that add another option. You can rename things. You can drag and drop while you're here. You can also do the same while you're in the actual project. 
So that's how you get the card table up. And usually when you're new to card table, you get a pop up here that says, can you walk me through this a little bit? So if any of this is confusing, um, go ahead and click on that video. And also the bottom right hand side of the page has a ton of information. So I can click on that question mark, type in card table and get some straightforward details right here. Or if it's too much, just talk to us. We're here. We're here for this purpose. So um, hopefully this helps you kind of see how you can customize any of these projects. And then once you get a handle on how you want things to go, I would definitely encourage you to start using a template. Because if you have the same kind of project happening over and over again, if you're always making commercials for folks, maybe you want to start making a template that's called like, you know what, new commercial. And so you'll start with the, the tools that you know are effective for you and your team using a template. So I'm going to jump in on that. Laura, if you'll put in the chat our customizing project tools video, because Ashley did just show that you can have multiple tools. I have a video all about it showing why you might want to have two message boards or two card table tools and even some real examples of how we use them internally. So we'll put that in the chat. Um, we have a lot of questions that we haven't gotten to. So I'm going to jump right in with this one from Nathan. How do we best manage tasks or reminders to send recurring invoices to clients? Ashley, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah. So um, when we talk about tasks and reminders, I, I very much think, all right, to do's. Let me get in here. Let me go into, in, or maybe this will be like invoice follow-ups or whatever it is. And so for um, for client A, maybe I know consistently that we have something due uh, the second week on a Friday. And I'm going to actually repeat that so you can choose from these options of how frequently this happens for you. So even if you have something that's like, you know what, we actually do this every seven weeks and it feels a little bit random, that random option is here. And so you can go ahead and make sure that whatever it is that, that you need um, in to do format can repeat as often as makes sense for you. And maybe consistently we want to make sure that we include and, you know, maybe they specifically Maybe they're in a different country. We want, them, we want the VAT ID for them or something like that. Or you want to make sure that we have the um, the address in, you know, wherever else it is. And so we can set reminders for ourselves in this way. And what I like about this is that now that this is due on April 14th, I can go into the schedule tool and the schedule tool pulls together everything that has a date in this project, cards, tasks, and it pulls it into one location so that I can see that on the 14th, we have that invoice follow-ups. Uh, we have a client A, we need to make sure that we do that. And I'll probably take it a step further and go ahead and assign it to someone. And maybe, oh, to Chad. And maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and set myself as the one who's notified, you know, or maybe we have a couple of people who want to be notified about this. So we can make it as involved of a process as we want to, but that's why I handle recurring anything. And that recurring deadline, once you check that task off, it will automatically add an additional task for the next date. Oh, a perfect demo right there. <laughs> so it'll automatically pop up. So it's kind of um, add it once, one and done kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to jump to this question from Gabriella. How can I manage process improvement plans in Basecamp? Gabriella, I'm not sure if you're here. We weren't sure if that was process or performance for employees. We're just going to kind of take a general approach to that one. Any kind of process improvement plan. Either one of you, actually, you want to jump on, on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so when we're talking about process, uh, I talk to a lot of people every day about processes that feel broken. And so I think there tends to be first, we need like a starting point of communication. And so if the process is, um, let's go with question or something like this, um, maybe we'll say, maybe we'll just call this pain points and I'll, I'll outline my pain points and whatever else it is that in the process feels a little bit off. I'll notify the people who this is most relevant to, and we can have a discussion on this thread. And so communication for sure is, is to me the basis of how you improve a process. And then once we get started into that, then we can really maybe we'll take, you know, we're not big fans of meetings, but you could take a meeting and you could set up templates so that we know, all right, so if we have a new process um, for how we handle, let's stick with that logo thing, logo uh, redesigns, right? So if we have this in mind, then we can say, all right, what is going to help us for our specific need? What are we finding is useful for us? Maybe we want to elevate campfire. Maybe we want to stop the emails coming from the clients 
that feel excessive. So let's go ahead and make a client campfire for this person. So it's really looking at these tools and saying, how can we apply this to um, you know, the, the highest good of our process? And so uh, I would say communication is probably number one here, um, but also having it written down and not only in meetings is going to be very, it's just vital because then we have something to refer back to with these folks that, um, you know, we can see if maybe, maybe you uh, invite someone into your account a month down the line and you're still in the process of improving your process. So we want to be able to keep them up to date and kind of keep people informed. It also helps to keep yourselves accountable to what it is that you said and how you were feeling at the time. So it has a lot of purposes and uh, I would start with communication and then a template. That's great. And also thinking through, is that a separate project that's just about the process improvement or are you using tools within the same project? So lots of flexibility there. Okay. I'm going to jump to Chloe's question, which is what's the best calendar integration for projects, timeline sprints, project milestones. Actually, maybe you can jump mm -hmm. into how you can subscribe to calendars in Basecamp. Yeah. I know I use that function. Definitely. Daily. So <laughs> me too. And so, you know, we have this, uh, a couple of dates here um, that we want to be aware of. And so as we saw before, they're on the schedule, all of them. And so what you can do is if you're using Google Outlook or Apple Calendar, you can go ahead and click on that link at the top of the, of the actual schedule. And then you'll be prompted to, you know, we're not going to do this because it's, it's already connected, but you can click on this and it'll actually go into your Outlook, Apple, or Google Calendar. So it lives alongside um, everything else. I'm not sure if we can see multiples of my screens. No, no but, just that tab. Um, so it'll just pop up into your other external calendar so that it can live alongside anything else that you already have. So, um, and you can do this for as many schedules as it makes sense. So if maybe this is one that you're in all the time, fantastic. If you are in the HQ and you want to subscribe to this schedule, you can do that. If you'd rather see that it's, it's Kaylee's anniversary and that one's really important to you, you can add individual things to your external calendar. Um, so this integration is going to be very important, um, especially I would say my schedule or my assignments. Let's click on my schedule because this is everything that you've um, either been assigned with a due date or everything that, um, includes you in the event. So we have one product meeting. I might see a little icon over there. And then if I add the schedule to my Google Outlook or Apple calendar, then I will see my schedule alongside logo art redesign altogether. Ashley, this is a good question in here that I, I would like to know myself too. So, <laughs> so uh, the Basecamp schedule uh, automates into your external calendar, but does it work the other way around? It does not. It's a one-way sync. Um, I've been here for six years and it has been an extreme difficulty to get it in uh, the other direction. And so um, part of that is because people are really stuck on using Google Outlook or Apple. And so trying to get all of their events and dates into Basecamp has proven to be not only difficult, but slightly impossible and definitely messy when we did attempt it. So um, it's it's a, an external sync from inside Basecamp to the external calendar. You know, that's an interesting point. The We use Google Calendar for our content calendar, j just so we know when to post things, when things are live. And also it's part of our content production calendar. So if it's like, we're gonna post this thing on April Fool's Day, we didn't post anything on April Fool's Day, but you know, if there's like a weekly time to like make a video or to, you know, get things edited or to edit copy, um, we, we put that on the calendar as well, but what we wouldn't want is for all of that to then populate into our schedule on Basecamp of like, oh my gosh, I got like, I got like 25 things today, but they're not like really relevant for like the schedule itself. They're more kind of uh, aspects in, to hit uh, in, ter in terms of timing for mm -hmm. any particular part of the project. Yeah. yeah. And I know for me personally, my calendars and base camp sync to my personal calendar, which is great because I have in one place, my family birthdays alongside <laughs> my meetings internally are all on my, I personally use Apple calendar, but then yeah. my base camp calendar is separate. So mm -hmm. while we're talking about software calendaring things, Carlos had a question. What other software tools do you use on a daily basis in addition to base camp? Glenn, we'll start with you. Yeah, so for the marketing team, uh, we use all things Adobe as well as Figma. Um, 
Chad and I review uh, editing. I, I edit and animate as well when needed, not as like a, you know, it's not, it, it, it's, it's, it's only like uh, when it makes sense, I'll, I'll jump in on things, but we'll review edits uh, via uh, Frame.io. And, and we use that as a, a, a web hook within our video, our broader kind of always on video project. So that's something easy we could uh, jump into to add kind of time stamped notes on things. Um, those are the main uh, other kind of programs that I use. I think for like file transfer externally, um, we're we're partners with with uh, with WeTransfer. So when it makes sense externally for like a one off share. I'll use WeTransfer rather than inviting someone to a Basecamp project to share files with them. So uh, not not so much a plug for our, our, our friends at, at WeTransfer, but you know, there's a time and a place for like one-off mm -hmm. file sharing like that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think to kind of keep everything in one location, let me actually go to a different project, the, the one that has more filled out information here. Um, if you want to kind of keep everything together in this project that's related to the logo art design. So if I'm using Figma, um, I can go ahead and open a door to an external service. There is a Figma option here mm -hmm. amongst a handful of others. And then if you don't see what it is that you're looking for, click on external service. And that's just for whatever link works for you. So I'll click on Figma. I will paste the link. This is really the only one I have. So hopefully that works and we're good. And again, here's where we can decide, is this private to our team? Is this something that we want to share with our clients? We'll probably keep it private. Um, and we will go back to the project and we'll see it amongst all of our other tools that are native to Basecamp. Now we have doors to these uh, external platforms. Amazing. I'm going to jump to, there's a couple of card table specific questions. So I'm going to try to knock those out kind of sequentially. I know we're close to running out of time. We're going to go just to the top of the hour. Um, but the question from Gabriella, is there a way Basecamp can replace a ticketing software? And we personally, for our support team, use Help Scout. Our programmers, though, use Card Table as a way to track bugs and that sort of ticketing system. So maybe we can talk through Card Table in that regard. Yeah. So Card Table can be used for a, a plethora of things. Um, but in, in most of these, um, since you can decide to kind of edit things in a way that, that makes sense for you, I don't think I have an example, so I'm just going to leave this one here. Um, what we do is that we have multiple card tables um, for different kinds of bugs. So if, if your ticketing system needs to be kind of siloed into these different areas, you can go ahead and do that by making multiple tools like we showed you before. Um, and then you can have different stages here. And so this is maybe going to be my I'm investigating the stage um, of, of this particular case. Maybe I'm waiting for the... Uh, a reply from from this particular person and so you could use card table for this but it just depends on your volume of, of how things go um so for us our volume is really high like you really said we're using help scout and so that tends to be best for us but for smaller teams card table has definitely worked and it also can be really nice because what i can do here is i can search for all my card tables and i can search for that one thing that i was looking for so what was that bug <laughs> that i uh typed up about about i don't know an export or something like that so you can literally just look for that word decide i want to narrow this down into card tables um and maybe you know it was by you at a specific time or what have you so um the benefit is that you get to use the find feature for that yeah, I think it's a great idea to use it as a request uh, tool, especially for cross-functional partners. Uh, if there was a card table just for kind of intaking the needs and for all of you marketers, you know how many kind of interdependencies there are with the rest of the business, especially if you're not only leading a marketing team, but you're also running the business. There, there's a lot of overlap, you know, with, with Kimberly, Ashley and I, even though Ashley and Kimberly are on an ancillary team, our worlds overlap a bunch. So, uh, f for my own team, for instance, I, I'll put in I'll put in cards in triage, um, in be at, at at times when I don't know if it's even in the right project because my own team is in part in projects that I'm not a part of, and some of them overlap with the product team. So it's 
if it's related to content and if it's related to our website, like if it's something on our homepage, for instance, or if it's something in one of our articles, I'll put something like, hey, would it make sense to add a newsletter sign up on the, on the articles? And I'll put it in SEO content because it's, it's, it qualifies as SEO content. But then Kelly might move that into one of the web projects because it's website related. So, you know, that's what's nice about cards is that you can move them around as needed, but the, but the need for the work itself, it, it just goes in the right place. Uh, mm -hmm. so the person requesting it puts it in a place that everyone understands that's where the request goes. And then it, you kind of funnel things in that way. And then you sort of funnel things out accordingly of like, let's put that mm -hmm. here because this person is going to kind of support on, on whatever the, the need is. And I think that's a perfect transition to show how you can watch a card, either the triage section or moving a card through channels. Um, Ricardo, I've popped up your question. Is there a plan to add automation directly into Basecamp for to-dos or card table? We don't know what the future holds. We plan in six-week cycles, so we only know what's happening six weeks at a time. Um, but I do want Ashley to show you how you can watch and know something is happening, even mm -hmm. though that automation doesn't happen automatically. Yeah, so um, I also have one more thing to add, and I think it answers somebody else's question about steps. So someone remind me if I forget. But what happens here is that if maybe I need to be a part of the client feedback, I wanna be aware of what happens, but I don't really need to be involved in drafting or internal. So I can watch the column that makes the most sense to me, or I can, you know, if I change my mind, I can always toggle this off. So when something, when I'm watching this column and someone moves a card over into this particular space, then I get notified. I get a hey menu notification. And so I can click into here and see that someone has moved something over into this, just like this one, QA over to in progress, you know, so you'll get a notification similar to that. Um, and then that, that tells me, all right, let me go ahead and take a look at what's happening over here. And then I can see kind of how this card moved. Um, they'll probably have plenty of, of additional comments here of maybe like we saw previously in, um, in the card table where Chad had posted the actual video. You know, so we can give feedback in that way. And then maybe once that's finished, we can move it to ready to go live. And then whoever's set to be notified, whoever's set to watch that particular column, they'll be notified about that one. Um, I also, okay, steps. I also wanted to mention when some people are talking about steps and to do's together, there is a way in your, um, in your card to add steps to whatever it is that you're working on. Let's go into website here. And so this is kind of like little tasks. So maybe we have to do this thing and that thing and that other one. These are not nearly as robust as we saw the other to-dos can be, but sometimes it just makes sense to have a little bit of um, task management inside of a card. So I think people often want to know what's the right way to use it. And it's just difficult to say because maybe a, a card table with just a couple steps is perfect for you. But maybe you'd just rather use to-dos and skip card tables completely or just use a combination like we saw Glenn doing. So just know that this is all available for you. And if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one about it, you can always let us know. Um, again, that email is guides at basecamp.com. And that'll reach Kimberly, myself, Laura, who you've probably already met in your account, and then Rodrigo. Perfect. We're about to wrap it up, but I'm going to take a couple of quick questions. And then as Ashley said, feel free to email us. Um, there's a question about the HQ. Some people wish they could color code projects to make them easier to spot from home. We have something labeled HQ. Is that a feature you can use? The answer is yes and no. We now use a lot of naming to identify projects on a homepage. So you'll see that Enormacom HQ. We often see emojis for um, making projects stand out. We no longer have the labels of HQ or Teams. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, if you will just jump in and show how you can edit a project name and, and add, a, add a little flair to it. Yeah, definitely. So when I click into a project, you can always click on edit project details. And maybe um, you can be really creative with these. Let me skip that. Then you can go ahead and say, you know what? Um, everything related to the copy editing side of the team is going to go ahead and use this logo. And then we'll put the client name and then we'll put whoever's leading this project. So you can do something like that for, for really anything. I've also seen people get um, a little bit more specific about like what internal team 
um, or not, not internal team, but like what client it is. So if they are um, doing marketing work for a bakery, maybe everything that involves that bakery will include a baguette at either the beginning or the end of that project um, title. And so then once you have multiple baguettes, <laughs> we can just say maybe this is like our client HQ or something like that. And maybe we'll make another project and this is for their menu redesign. Once you start to see all these little baguettes on your screen, um, you can kind of stay on the home page and, and you know visually see that. But I love viewing all in a list and then looking at A to Z because then all my emojis are sorted by by the one that they actually you know are most similar to. So the baguettes will be right next to each other. And you know this this uh, view of the directory is one of my favorites. So if it's one of yours, you can also just take this link and bookmark it. And then click on that when you get into Basecamp and see either A to Z or what's most relevant to you. So you have choices too. All projects, I'll just add, all projects is really great too. If you're joining a team that's already using Basecamp, uh, when I joined four months ago, it, it's always intimidating starting a new job, especially when you're joining a job of Basecamp experts. So, mm -hmm. you know, going in there and seeing even, you know, the marketing team is very new, but there have been aspects of marketing over the so for me to kind of join in and, and get up to speed on all the great work that's been done to date, mm -hmm. what everyone's been up to, uh, all pro looking at all projects is, is a great snapshot to, uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Ricardo, I'm going to answer your questions about templates in card tables. They do not exist yet. It is something that we've heard a couple of customers wanting. I know I would personally love it. So we're hoping that it ends up on a roadmap at some point templates for card table. It does not yet exist at this point. Ashley, before we wrap, I know you love hill charts. And there is one question about hill charts that I want to get to before we conclude. It is something that you are passionate about. So I'm going to have you explain what they are. And then the yep. question is, how can you see them from the homepage? Yes, I genuinely love hill charts. Um, there's something about knowing where you are in the stage that makes it feel very hopeful for me, no matter what it is. It can for me, it's mostly been a home renovation. And so knowing where things are, um, and no matter no matter what it is that, that you're working on, it can be really wonderful to kind of see where um, your lists are. So yes, I have, you know, both of these logo requests. Well, where are we at with Kimberly and where are we at with this other one? So I can um, track any of these lists on a hill chart. And this hill chart will allow you to kind of update it. And there's no, you know, there aren't any numbers or anything like that, but it feels like it's here. If, even if I've checked nothing off, we've done this before. So actually, you know what? It feels like it's over here. And I can type, you know, anything about this particular update, notify the people that I need to notify um, to make sure that they're kind of aware of whatever's happening with this list on a broad basis. So someone does not have to click into a list and under, you know, click into each individual task to see where things are, read through the comments. They don't have to do that if we enable something like a hill chart so that we can really get that update and then see those updates over time by looking at the history of it. Now, hill charts are specific to projects, so you'll only see them within a single to-do tool, meaning that if you have multiple to-do tools, you can see multiple hill charts, but right now there isn't a way to kind of make them interact with one another. The higher level view that we have is gonna be the lineup. And so if any of your projects have a start and an end date, this is going to give you a quick 10,000 foot view of um, any of your projects that have, again, a start and an end date. So you can see ones that are finished, ones that are continuing until September and kind of get a strong lay of the land. So it doesn't, you know, it won't quite be the same, but I, I would, I would love to see again in the future, something that's like maybe a hill chart and a lineup mixed together. So it's been asked before and we will take that feedback and we will give it to our designers and developers. You guys, we've been with you for well over an hour. We are not going to keep you and we're going to move on with our day and hope that you have enjoyed this time with us. As Ashley said, if there's any questions that you guys have, reach out to us. We're happy to answer anything. That email is guides at basecamp.com. That gets you directly to Ashley, myself, Laura, and Rodrigo on our team. So if you have any questions, any question we didn't get to, or any follow-up as you're getting your account started, please reach out to us. Laura mm -hmm. will also be sending you a follow-up email with a link to the recording, which will be right back here where you were. And if you have any feedback for us on how the session ran or any questions that you have about sessions going forward, please reach out. She'll send you an email. Let us know if there's anything else we can do. And as always, thank you for your interest in Basecamp. And you can find more information if you're not already signed up at Basecamp.com. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone.